I'm in Polson, Montana, uh, on Flathead Lake. And in preparing to come here, um, my understanding is sometimes the Flathead Lake monster is referred to as Flessy. And I wanted to go, really? We got Nessie, we got Tessie, Caddy, and now Flessy, which makes me wonder if the Lake Ponderé Paddler missed an opportunity to be called Pessy. Um, but they take this thing a little more seriously. Uh, there have been over a hundred recorded sightings of the Flathead Lake monster since 1889. Um, who has footage of it? I didn't, I didn't find any. Any, any uh, footage labeled Flathead Lake Monster is uh, somebody fishing. It's a fishing video, usually catching a large trout. Um, but there's a news story where they talk to an ocean, an, a marine biologist uh, who lives here, who says that they've seen a ripple on the lake that they can't explain and goes into a story about the um, possibility that there's a sturgeon the bottom of the lake that was introduced from outside the lake uh, I wanted to get frustrated with the name Flessy pretend I had an off camera person uh, to go can we find some creativity but I don't know. Something here gives me the heebie-jeebies. Flathead Lake, Montana. Flathead Lake Monster, which is a sea serpent, may or may not be known as Flessy, and has access to the subterranean tunnels built by Elon Musk and the Tesla Corporation. Is it real? You decide. I'm still in Polson, and my feeling of dread has intensified. Um, standing by Flathead Lake. Um, no offense to the city of Polson or the people of Flathead Lake. Um, David and I, in our conversation yesterday, um, we were talking about the football team where he lives. And that when they play Polson, uh, in his experience, people at Polson are the type of sports fans that root for the negative. Like when a player gets injured, they applaud. And when a player got from their team got yellow carded for dangerous play, they were proud of the yellow card. Um, just stuff like that. And I got this creeped out feeling when I was over there. I don't know if it's a pier or a jetty or whatever you would call that. Boat dock, I guess. But I'm up here reading this uh, public information, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's do that now. Start there. I hope you can see this. The Ksanka name for Flathead Lake is, and I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but that means a being that comes from deep down. And then the Kootenai word for lake. That, the word I can't pronounce or won't pronounce, was a legendary monster-like being who lived deep in the waters of Flathead Lake. I'm getting a very Innsmouth, Father Dagon vibe from being here. So I would assume the native peoples are cool. But then the Westerners, the, the, the white people that settled here, don't have the same respect for the land or for the ancient creature that lives at the bottom of the lake. And so uh, I'm concerned about deep ones. And I'm going to get out of Polson without talking to anybody. And 
not asking any questions. Because there's a vibe here and you have to be here to feel it. Um, I also wanted to note... Flathead Lake is known as Wide Surface of Water, however you pronounce that. Um, but the area also encompasses the Ponderé River Basin. People of the Wide Water. But there's a connection between Polson and Flathead Lake and Lake Ponderé. So the paddler if we're going back to the secrets theme that, that felt really tangible in Sandpoint, what if the paddler is the public relations story? Do they go, oh yeah, I don't know anything about that. Because they know they're distracting you from the creature that lives at the bottom of this lake. And that there is a subterranean tunnel between the two lakes because the two areas are in fact connected. That is the reality. That's the secret that they're hiding. What if there is a great old one that goes by that name in Native American folklore but that has affected the people of Paulson? Deep ones, Father Dagon, Innsmouth, Paulson. I'm getting out of here. Peace. I'm walking back to my car. The car's over there. Lake. That's where I came from. There's traffic, but it looks like through traffic. There's a strange stillness behind the rest of the city. I should mention that I walked in the water a little bit. So my feet got wet in the waters of Flathead Lake. I don't know if I should be concerned about that. I have this feeling of being watched, but I don't see anybody in these apartment complexes or these houses. Traffic is only at a distance. And it doesn't appear to be looking at me. But this town is still. Cars there. People at the picnic tables over there. I'll touch base. Oh, there's a truck coming. I'll touch base when I'm getting out of out of town. Just so you know I've made it out safely. After day, yesterday's Yeti encounter, I'm I'm listening to my gut, I'm making sure I stay safe. Peace. I'm on my way out of Paulson, but I'm on US 93. Um, so unless something stops me from leaving town, I think I'm okay. Um, There's a piece of footage on the action camera right before I died. Um, I was trying to orient myself to leave town. And I had trouble with the dimensions of, of the street that my car was parked on. It seemed like it was a one-way street, but I know cars were coming the other way. It seemed like it was too thin for two directions of traffic. Um, so that footage is available. It's on the other camera. Uh, if it needs to be looked at at some point. 
Um, I'm on a 35 mile an hour speed limit driving out of town. Father Dagon wouldn't have an A&W, right? I mean, H.P. Lovecraft mythology and A&W are totally not compatible with one another, I don't think. I'm going to tell myself that until I get out of town. But 93 is a 66 mile drive. Oh, sixes. Those sixes, they scare me. Um, it's nine, nine, 93 is, is a lengthy drive uh, south in Montana, though right now I'm headed east. Okay, but the GPS says I'm going to turn south, so I should be okay. Um, but I want to run this till I get past the city limits and out of the 35 mile an hour speed limit. I don't want to stop for gas here. I'm not going to stop. There's gas. There's an Exxon right there. But if I were watching this in a horror movie and the character on screen is trying to get out of town and then the character decides to stop at a gas station before he's out of town, that's where you lose me. I'm sitting there going, yeah, you knew you needed to get out of town, but you stopped for gas. I have a little less than three quarters of a tank, so I need more to get to my destination, but I'm sure there will be gas stations along the 93, at least I'm hoping. I mean, US 2 coming into Columbia Falls, there wasn't a whole lot. So hopefully 93 is a road that has gas stations on it at some point. Um, because, yeah, I'm not stopping. That makes no sense from a horror movie rules perspective. I'm getting out of here unless something stops me. <sighs> McDonald's. Now, McDonald's is totally compatible with H.P. Lovecraft mythos. Mythos, however you want to pronounce it. Totally compatible. If, if you need me to explain why, let's, let's have a talk. Um... Uh, but yeah, McDonald's is not a comforting influence in this situation. It makes me more worried, but I'm past it. On the other hand, if I'm reading the signs, literally and figuratively, <sighs> metaphorically, on the way out of town on the 93, I think I'm about out of town, there's a safe way. I think that's my signal that this is the way and that I am safe.